how are you all doing? I hope you're all doing fine. I am fine too, I thank God. If you are a returning subscriber, thank you so much for returning back here. Thank you for your love and your support. But if it is your first time here on my channel, hello, welcome to my channel. Please, before you leave, remember to subscribe and hit subscribe automatically. Your bell is on so you will be notified whenever I upload a new video. And I promise you guys, you will always enjoy every content that I upload on this channel. So dear friends, in today's video, I am going to be sharing with you a story time <laughs> of a Nigerian lady who found love on online dating app with a Swedish guy. Guys, they are here today to share their love story with you. And I asked them questions and from their response, it is going to help you very, very much. You who is on online dating apps, searching for love. Yeah. So guys, without wasting much of your time, let me welcome this cute couple <laughs> to share their love story with you. Hi guys, good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever you are watching from. So firstly, I want to shout out to African Bella for giving us this opportunity to share our love story. So for you out there, waiting for God's time to answer your prayer for you out there searching for a white man to come and marry to you for you out there still on the dating hub this video is for you i will tell you never give up keep it up and put it in prayer it might take a years it might take uh, several months but one day be rest assured that your prayer will be answered okay so never give up never back up so firstly my love story was i was dating a nigeria guy when i was dating him i thought this is my last bus stop i thought so uh, we are going to get married then suddenly he told me that his family said my village is too far from Lagos state so his family and uh, he himself he based in Lagos state and he said benway state is far from Lagos, which uh, his family said they cannot come to Benue because during that period, the Fulani S men and Benue people were having a fight. So that's what ended our relationship. And uh, on Dating Hub, I started watching some videos on TikTok, on YouTube channel, on Instagram. I see how uh, black girls married to white people and I see how their lovely kids play with them. I fell in love with uh, white people kids and I was like, oh my God, I think I need to have a white kid and also marry to a white man because white people are caring people and they are lovable people. So I started having the interest and I started doing my own research by um, the online dating that I can meet a white and I saw Afro introduction and I saw Tinder. Firstly, I downloaded Afro introduction. The Afro introduction that I downloaded, I did not subscribe to it. So since I did not subscribe to it, I was not getting uh, white people like that. Few of them that is sending me message, I could not open to it. So that's why I will advise you if you are on the dating app make sure you subscribe to the dating app so that you can see your choice you can update your profile picture in a good way you can you can choose your age the age man that you want specifically you can put it there so close your eye and subscribe to this dating app thing for the app you guys know my advice and i'll always stick to that don't pay for dating apps <laughs> But if you decide to pay for the dating apps, like how Jenny is advising you, then go chat with guys that are paying on that dating app. Don't pay for a dating app and go chat with guys that have not paid. Later, 
it will turn against you and you know how i told you all this so case closed <laughs> so when i downloaded the free introduction i did not get what i wanted then i did not subscribe to it and uh, i got a uh, tinder too i downloaded tinder and when i downloaded tinder I, I i i was on tinder 2018 looking for my soulmate i was there and um i was there searching 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 i could not get anybody the challenges that i faced on dating hub was any person that i meet on tinder they will like the next thing they will say send me your picture your nude picture so i will advise you never send your nude picture your nude picture is your dignity your body is your dignity don't do such so i i was chasing searching searching on tinder and i could not find anyone so in 2002 i tried to delete my tinder i got upset and i got a message from my lovely husband <laughs> it was my husband that reached out to me first i was not the one that reached out to my husband but you are free free to 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 tell any man that hello so it's not a big day white people are not like this if you like that white man say hello to him but me it was my husband was the one that reached out to me so she said he, sorry he said hello and I replied, hi. So we chat a little bit from there and I told him, I'm not always here. Can we chat on WhatsApp? That's how we exchange our number. When we exchange our number, firstly, we were not talking about love. We try to know each other first. So always try to know each other first before you jump into love. Don't jump into love like that. He, he tells me about his his lifestyle his past lifestyle what he does for a living i told him my past lifestyle what i do for a living mm -hmm. as well so from there we proceed proceed to loving each other so when we start loving each other we met like a july we met on july and my birthday was august so this my wonderful husband mm -hmm. <laughs> he sent me a birthday gift um august so we just met one month and he sent me a birthday gift so i was like oh my god this man is nice so i need to keep on loving him from there the love start growing we talk every day morning afternoon evening so from there we start uh planning meet over yeah we we actually dated on life for on online for like uh, nine months before he came to nigeria we dated like nine months before he came to nigeria to marry me so we started planning meet over so we did our what is it called we did our research how he will come to nigeria and he applied for nigeria visa and the visa came outside and he came to nigeria 2000 and, uh, 2023 yes. so he came to nigeria 2023 and i went to the airport to pick him he actually stayed in the hotel he did not stay in my house so he stays in the hotel so guys i had to take a pause because jenny forgot this and i was like <laughs> I am the right person, perfect person to talk about it. And it is about the goodies. <laughs> yeah, so I asked Jenny, when did she share her goodies? When did they enjoy their goodies? Was it the first, first day when he arrived in Nigeria? Or they had to wait till they get married and then enjoy the goodies? But Jenny was like, no, Bella, <laughs> we enjoyed the goodies that same, same day. We, we couldn't wait because <laughs> we had talked a lot on the phone, you know, <laughs> planned, planned and planned. Eventually, we have met in real life, of course, the goodies had to be shared. And I already knew that. 
he was the one. <laughs> so there was no problem for me to give out my goodies. And it went super, super good. It was amazing. <laughs> yeah, so the goodies were enjoyed on that same, same day. If you had this question in mind. <laughs> Before he comes, we have already planned how to get married. So we we plan our marriage on online by talking to each other. So if you love that man and if you don't want to waste time, you guys should discuss it when you guys are chatting. So when he comes, because Africa, especially Nigeria visa is not easy. When he come, let him just come and marry you and go. Not that uh, he will confess. You have already know each other already by talking, by chatting. You've known each other. Nine months is enough to know to know the person, right? If it if it feels right, it's enough. Yes. If it feels right, it's enough. Mm -hmm. So we met uh, like nine months. We know each other nine months. So the next thing is for him to come and marry me. So I see some lady said, oh. Uh, he has to confess the next time he will be married. Mine was not like that. We've already known each other on uh, uh, it on WhatsApp, talking every day, making video call, uh, sharing our lifestyle, everything. So we've known already. So we don't need to say, let him confess before he go and come back. The stress will be lesser. If he comes, if he truly loved this person and he truly loved it, let him just come and marry you. So when he came, well, when we were talking online, I did not disclose him to any of my family member. When my husband, like a month, is like a month coming to Nigeria, then I had to call my dad, discuss it with my dad, um, tell a few of my friends and tell my aunties. So that is how my family gets to know. So when I was chatting with him, nobody knows. So even my friends did not know until it's like a month of him coming to marry me before I disclosed him to my family. So when he came, I went to the airport and I picked him. Then like five days to our wedding, my husband proposed to me. So. He took me to a restaurant and he proposed to me. Then after he proposed to me, then we proceed to our marriage. And we did our wedding at the registry. After we did our wedding, uh, we took our families and friends to eat like a restaurant. We had a day together and we uh, shared a good moment together. That is how it was and uh, my husband left oh my god another long distance again <laughs> oh goodness it was not really easy though another long distance again so when he, he went back to sweden i discovered that I was pregnant yeah i discovered that I was pregnant a month after he, he left so we have to uh, what is it called? We have to do research how to get me to Sweden. So my husband started doing research and we applied for a resident permit. Uh, for the one, uh, some people said um, uh, Swedish people like 50-50 uh, what is it called? Relationship, mm -hmm. like financial aspect. Me and my husband are not like that. My husband has been the one taking care of me. Right, baby? Uh, it's very natural because I, I am the one who has a salary and everything like that. And uh, so, so it, it is like this. My money is your money and your money is my money. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> so we both, like, we share everything together. Of course, in, in future, when I start working, as a wife, if you are sad working, you have to help your family. So that is it. So I don't know the one people say, oh, 50 50. Oh, me and my husband never discussed that from day one. He has been the one taking care of me, 
uh, even when I, I was pregnant back then in Nigeria, he has been the one taking care of me and now I'm in Sweden, he's the one still taking care of me. But in future when I'm working as a wife, if you are working, you have a husband, you have kids, you have to take care of your home. My money is my husband's money and his money is my money. So no need of say 50-50. So no need of saying 50-50. And mostly, I don't know, maybe the youngest ones always say 50-50. Maybe, 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 maybe. I don't know. <sighs> so, I don't know. I think it's very natural. I mean, if, I, if you were the one who were work, was working and bringing the money, well, that's yeah. what we have to live on. Of course, yeah. because we are a couple. Yeah. So, my husband left. I discovered I was pregnant and uh, where the challenges of uh, being apart away and as a pregnant woman, oh my God, it was not really easy. But uh, you, have, uh, you have to keep yourself going, giving yourself encouragement, making yourself happy. If it is possible, take yourself out, meet friends. You and your friends should be going out. Like anything that you know that will make you happy so that you not fall into depression. Just do it for yourself. For you out there still in Africa, waiting for God time to approve your visa or your resident permit, don't worry, you are going to meet your husband. Because me, I was pregnant and I almost fall into a depression, but I always do what will make me happy. So I never give up and my husband always called the, um, uh, what is it called, the immigration. He always reach out to the immigration every week, like once in a week, he always call them. So if you have somebody that that is in abroad and is waiting for you to come over, let him also be calling this immigration. Keep them, like reminding them. You know, when you are reminding somebody, you are giving the highlight of uh, what is going on. So let them keep on reminding this immigration so that your case will be fast. So that is it. And so there is a day I did a video here and I told you guys that finding love online can be really challenging. But even after finding him, challenges don't stop. Especially if you are into an interracial relationship and you live in different countries. So Jenny's love story takes you back to what I talked about. It's not easy. You guys have to be strong. You guys have to be really, really in love. Otherwise, the relationship will not work out. So expect challenges and be ready to fight those challenges together. Don't be like, oh my God, I'm so unlucky. You know, I married this white guy, but challenges are so many. Who does not want me to be happy? <laughs> are village people at work? <laughs> no, that's not the case. But the reality of how interracial dating can be if you live in different countries. Yeah, lots, lots of challenges. <laughs> I delivered my baby in Nigeria and uh, I came to Sweden. I came to Sweden at the airport. My husband came to pick us and it was a, a beautiful moment of our life. It was like heaven on earth. It's, it's like, oh my God, it was not really easy, but God did it. Wow, wow, wow. This really melted my heart <laughs> when she said I felt like, you know, in heaven <laughs> when we reunited. This reminds me of my baby who traveled recently and she was like, Bella, when I stepped my foot in Europe <laughs> at the airport, I was like, ah. <laughs> Happy, 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 heaven on earth. <laughs> the excitement of being with your fiancé or the happiness of being with your boyfriend, your husband, eventually and forever. <laughs> Nothing like is stopping you from being together. This whole challenge of the distance. <laughs> at that time, the distance is closed and you are at peace that 
the whole stress <laughs> is out. Congratulations, dear. <laughs> and I must say that you have got a very cute, cute daughter. <laughs> kisses, kisses, lots of kisses to her. <laughs> So that was it um, for the young ladies out there um, waiting for your spouse to come and get married to you. Don't worry, don't worry. It will happen like a dream. Keep your hope and light. It will happen like a dream. Never give up there. Don't give up, don't give up. And never share your nude pictures. Don't share your nude picture. These are my advice. Never give up. Never share your nude picture. Don't ask for money when you guys started dating. Don't ask for recharge card. Don't ask for internet. Make sure you make this person your bestie, your best friend first. When this person falls in love with you, you will take care of you more than recharge card or more than uh, data. So all this minor, minor thing, you don't need to be asking about all this stuff. If the man finally fall in love with you, the man is going to do everything for you. So keep your hope alight and keep on prayer. Prayer is the key to everything that is successful in the world. So keep praying and um, for you, baby, uh -huh. how long have you been uh, dating site before you found me? I've been, I've been, I've been, I've been uh, in in and out of dating apps. I've been, uh, I, I, I can say like that. I've been for a couple of years, uh, yeah, but more or less serious or active or what you can say on, on the mm -hmm. apps. Mm -hmm. Uh, I can say like this to for advice to other white men that looking for a African girl, African girl or a foreign girl oh, or Nigeria girl. Yeah, that when you when you get on these international sites apps like Tinder, African introduction. I, I think you have to ask yourself how serious you are because uh, many, 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 I, I can say like this, if you compare, if you like a Swedish guy on a Swedish dating app, you don't get so much attention as a man. But when you are a white guy, in, in dating apps, like searching for a, for, for a black girl, you get a lot, lot more attention that can, for some guys, not so good for their ego. So, but suddenly they feel like they can pick whoever they want, but that, that's not how it is. Because if you are not serious, want to get married or you're just there for having fun or <laughs> looking for sex or something like that that's the kind of girls you're going to find <laughs> that's that's how it is so, because mm. and if you are serious mm. and you meet a girl uh, meet a girl you start chatting and uh, i would advise you to go if you like so really start liking one okay start chatting on whatsapp and make sure so what are your advice for uh, white people dating black people online that are scared of coming to africa to get married to them specifically in nigeria and ghana because um these white people online mm -hmm. a lot of them are scared of coming to nigeria and they are coming to ghana they are coming to Africa, they call, especially, specifically in Nigeria and uh, Ghana, mm. they say, oh, Ghana, uh, uh, Ghana ladies are fraud, Ghana, uh, Niger uh, Nigeria ladies are fraud. So what are your advice for, for those white people online? Uh, trust your... That have already yeah. been gotten one already. <laughs> So what are your advice for them? My advice are that you should ask yourself how serious you are, trust mm -hmm. your instincts, trust your heart, and uh, everybody is not scammers. 
No, 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 that's just a little part. And when you even come to Nigeria, yeah. it's stated on the visa, mm -hmm. like when the, uh, the lady who is even inviting you, if anything happens yeah. to you, they will hold the lady responsible. Yes. So you don't need to be scared. No. Once you come to African country, Nigeria or Ghana, mm -hmm. or any part of African country, this lady will guide you and protect you. Yes. Your safety is our responsibility. So you don't need to be scared. Don't be scared. If you love that lady, come to that lady and marry that lady. So guys, I know ladies from you know West Africa, I know that this video will give you the courage to move forward, to keep searching for that right guy on the dating apps. Because the thing is, you guys just be like, no, I am not succeeding because I am in Ghana. I am not succeeding because I am in Nigeria. I am in Cameroon. <laughs> I am from Ivory Coast. That is why I'm not finding any serious guy. Guys, you know, tend to go that east side of Africa, Uganda, Kenya, Tanzania, Rwanda. <laughs> but for us, they just talk of bad things. Do you know what, dear sister? That should not stop you from finding the right guy. Eventually, you will find that right guy just like Jenny's husband who never wanted or who never judged a lady just because of the country she comes from. And you see, they are happily married now. He says it is the best thing ever in his life, him marrying Jenny. Jenny is from Nai. Jeria, <laughs> yeah i am super super happy really yes guys i am always happy when i hear a beautiful success story like this so how long uh, do we date before you you start disclosing it to your family you start telling your family how you <laughs> get from Nigeria. Uh, I, I, I also had a little bit like you i was uh, my um, the only one who knew was my brother and uh, just before I I was going was applying for a visa my mom knew mm -hmm. and uh, so the, that, you know, this, these were the only two that knew that we were dating your brother your senior brother yeah my senior brother but, mm -hmm. and uh, when I got to, came to Nigeria, mm. told my kids mm. and my father, mm. because you know people are afraid of Nigeria, Ghana, blah blah. I didn't want them to be, be worried because they they don't know how it is. Okay, so. so guys, I want to add something here. Last time I did a video, it was Nala's video and I was talking about being introduced. But I got a comment, someone was like, I got introduced, but the guy later turned out not to be the one. So even if a guy introduces you, does not mean he is serious. But what I'm here to say is that never ignore that. If you are on the dating apps, searching for love. It's very, very important to be introduced to people close to him. A guy can't be telling you, I love you so much. You are my future wife. I am coming to Africa. I want to meet your parents. <laughs> but on his side, you don't know anyone. And when you bring that topic of introduction, the guy avoids it. No. Guys, let us not go to these dating apps or sites with our eyes closed. No, 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 no. And there is another thing that I want to talk about. On the dating apps exist guys of different types. Exist guys that are players. They're in there to play games. Exist guys that are there just they don't have a very serious reason to be on the dating app or some have got their own reasons you know maybe want to have that hot 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 sex chat with different women online but exist guys they are serious he will chat with you 
and he will show that really I am interested in you. And some will even show you that they really, really love you. But when you go to check their circumstances, that relationship cannot work. Maybe character wise, if you remember Eve's story, the guy was serious. He went to Uganda. He invited her to Austria. <laughs> but what happened? His character was incompatible with Eve. So that's just one of the examples. Yes, a guy can be serious, but his character, he is not a guy that will marry you and you live happily. That is one thing. Exist other guys, you know, this type, they are serious, all is good, but the family comes in between because they are easily manipulated. They are immature, but it's not that he was not serious. He was super, super serious, but sadly immature. So telling you all this, even if this immature guy introduces you to everyone, but again, cause he is easily manipulated. They tell him, no, don't take any lady from Africa. Don't take that lady from that country. The country is bad. It has no security and follows what the parents the friends are telling him he will leave you but it doesn't mean he was never serious <laughs> let me hope you guys understand others you find everything is fine but religion you know makes it difficult but it's not that he was not serious he was actually serious but maybe his parents decision or due to the culture traditions you know <laughs> he ties his hands to move forward with that relationship. Having said all this is to tell you that never ignore any online dating rule just because you think that nah, it's not important. Even if he doesn't introduce me to anyone, it's okay. He can still be serious. What if you are wrong? What if him not introducing you to anyone close to him is a red flag that will later turn out to break your relationship? Who knows? And lastly, dear friends, I'm not telling you to force these guys to introduce you. It should come naturally. If he's not doing it, then there is a way of asking to see if this guy really <laughs> tends to introduce you to his family. I know the stereotype behind online dating. In Africa, I don't know these days, but it's like when people get to hear you're on the dating apps, it's like you are selling yourself. You have actually given up on yourself. You don't have the confidence that you will find a guy in real life who will love you. That's how it is seen in Africa. But guys, even here in Europe, some, some families, oh my God, it is difficult for them to understand a guy when he tells them, I am chatting with this girl in Africa, we haven't met in real life. <laughs> They will discourage him. They will tell him, no, that's a risky thing to do. You know, scammers everywhere. <laughs> they will tell him horrible, horrible things. So sometimes you might be chatting with a guy and you talk about, you know, if his relatives, his parents knows about your relationship, he will tell you not yet. But not because he doesn't want to tell them, no. It's because of the stereotype behind dating sites <laughs> yeah or behind taking someone from africa and bring her to europe to america some say that no she's just gonna use you for papers for green card <laughs> so that is why this shouldn't be ignored you should listen to a guy very well if he tells you not yet i haven't introduced you to anyone because of one two three four and I told you it's totally okay, but don't go ahead and introduce the guy on your side. Just because you decided to attach yourself emotionally, you're so much in love with him, you trust him 100%, he is the one. If on his side he's like, no, I can't tell them now till I come, then wait, he comes to Africa, no introduction to anyone on your side. <laughs> When he decides, yes, I've talked to my family, then at that time, introduce him to your family. And exist guys who have kids, 
just like Jenny's husband. <laughs> Sometimes it's hard for kids to understand this whole thing of online dating, like a dad telling the kids, you know, I have this woman, we have been talking. They don't do it immediately. It will take time. So you have to be patient, but at the same time observing other, other, other things so that you don't ignore any red flag and keep seeing how it is going. If you chat with a guy, it has been six, seven months, and every time he tells you, I am serious, I want to marry you, of course, we need to see on his side, how is he decided? <laughs> how serious he is let me hope guys you understand me on this okay so when you were on dating sites yeah were you uh specifically like looking for a particular african girl from a country like either be nigeria ghana kenya Uganda or any part of Africa, Zimbabwe, Zambia. Were you looking for a specific African lady from the dating site? Uh, not at first, but when I searched around a little bit, it was. I think it's in the, in the internet world. It's it's more like Nigeria, Ghana, and Kenya are the three top African. That's uh, always on the dating. Yeah, room. exactly. And uh, but I, but I wasn't around so long before I met you. And just how long were you be on uh, Tinder before you met him? Ah, uh, okay. okay. a month. A month. Yeah. Are you for real? Yeah. <laughs> wow, that's mm. nice. Okay, I've been on earlier, but not active. Not active, no. okay. Yeah. You were there before, but you were not active. No. So when you started be active, yeah, that is when you made like a month. That is how you met me. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I, I would say that. Okay. Yeah. That's nice. <laughs> very nice. <laughs> For me, very nice. So, what are your advice again to black, white people? To white people, be sure that you are serious about this because mm. they, you you don't go around play with other people's yes. feelings don't don't think uh, oh my god yeah. is it new it's not, show you have yeah. never seen in your life yeah. you have been seeing all this stuff yeah. so stop asking for new features follow yes. your heart don't be scared yeah. of nigeria don't be scared because, of our uh, ghanaian yeah. ladies because if you, if you really want to uh, find black girl a good chance for you to meet because they're very 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 nice to you so what do you feel being married to nigeria again i feel very good about it of course now i only been married to you so i can't compare with everyone else but to be married to you is uh, the best thing i ever did in my entire life so you white guy out there, you've heard my husband now. Mm. Nigeria girls are the best. We we have this African culture by taking care of our home, taking care of our husband, taking care of our kids. So don't be scared of coming to Nigeria. Don't you know in you know, on uh, what is it called on internet there's negative part of every country. So don't be focused on this negative part. Focus on the good part. Focus on the lady that you are dating. So all this kind of stuff, don't put it in your head too much. Um, think about the future. Listen to your instinct, like my husband said. So thank you guys. So dear friends, before I end this video, I know some of you already know that Jenny is a content creator on YouTube. She has got her own YouTube channel. So please, 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 those who have not subscribed to her channel, go and support her. Her YouTube channel name is Jenny Lars, but I'm going to be writing it here so that you can see it and go support her. She has got very, very good content that you all will enjoy and learn from it. 
thank you so much guys for your support she is also on instagram i will share her instagram account name so that you can follow her there and give her the support thank you once again for those who have watched this video till now be blessed for your love and your support if you have liked this video give it a thumbs up share it with your friends family everyone that you think will enjoy this video and learn something watch my other videos too they are super super good comment below what you think about this video i would like to know if you haven't subscribed what are you waiting for join the family and thank you for subscribing until next time guys i love you so much you're always here in my heart ciao ciao Mwah.